Hey everyone, this is Brittany at the Ceramics Studio at the FIP Center for the Arts. Today we're going to work on some basic hand building techniques and I'm going to show you how to build a succulent planter. So to get started, um, here we have about a pound of clay and I'm going to use about a half pound today. So I'm just going to cut that in half and we will save that for a later project. So what you want to do to get started is to make a ball. And we're just gonna make a pinch pot today. So very, very few tools involved. Mostly it's gonna be our hands. Um, once you have your ball formed, what you'll do is push your thumb in, but make sure that you support the underside of the clay while you're doing this. And then you'll just start to slowly pinch and thin the clay out. And what we wanna do is have at the end about no more than a half inch thick, preferably a quarter to a third of an inch thick. Otherwise, we could have air bubbles in the clay. And as you're working around, you might notice that you're seeing some cracks along the edge. That's okay. We'll take care of those in a little bit. And we'll smooth out any little tiny cracks or little bumps that might have come out while you were making this, just along the edge. Um, it can be really tempting to use water at this point to smooth out the edges. Um, that might seem like the best option, but actually it's going to make the edge rough because it'll bring um, the sand that's in the clay out. So there we go. So at this point we have a pretty cute little bowl form. Uh, this is great, but I think that what I want to do is add some little feet. They'll be able to drain a little bit better. So what we'll do is just take a little bit more clay. And I'm just kind of making a small coil. And then because I want the feet to all be about the same size. I'm going to cut this into thirds. And once you have that done, roll them into a ball. And then take your finger and you'll slowly just taper that. So we're kind of trying to make a small little cone shape. And the bottom is going to be this side and this is the pot part that's going to attach to the pot. And we'll do that again until we have all three of them rolled into little cones. So now would be a really great time if you would like to add any texture to your piece or any kind of markings or patterns or things of that nature. Uh, the clay is still pretty wet, so we could use any number of things to add some texture to the clay. Um, these can be things that you find in your yard or just around your house. Um, you could also just draw on things with a toothpick. It could be anything that you want. This is really your time to shine creatively if you uh, want to add some texture. You can see too, now that I'm starting to add this texture, we're kind of getting rid of those finger marks that I put into the pot. And 
And now that we've added that texture to the pot, and I think I'm pretty with, happy with how it looks right now, um, we're going to come back to the feet. So we have our three little cones that we rolled. So we're just going to flatten this to make a little bit more of a good point of contact to put on the bottom of the pot. Okay, those look pretty nice, like little Hershey's Kisses. So now we can take um, our water or our slip and a toothpick or I like to use part of a comb that I cut apart for a tool, nothing super fancy, uh, or you could use a fork. What we want to do is take these little feet and I'm going to put some slip on it or some water, either one is fine. Um, and then I'm going to decide where I want to put these. And when I put this on there with the water on it, you can see it leaves a little watermark. And that's great because then I know exactly where to put my little score lines, my little score pattern. You could do this with a toothpick too, it'll just take a little bit longer. And the reason that we do this is so that the clay can marry together. Um, when you attach two different pieces of clay that might be, one piece might be a little more dry than the other piece, um, this becomes incredibly important so that the attachment doesn't fall off. So once you have that all slipped and scored, just very gently push this into the pot. And this piece is rather wet, so you can see I am kind of pushing and it's bouncing, or it's, it's pushing into the pot and it's making a depression on the inside. What you could do is wait a little while until this part of the pot dries a little bit. And we'll just go around and continue to attach these feet one at a time. Seems like it's on there pretty good. And this last one we'll score with our toothpick, comb, fork, whatever you have, whatever your favorite tool is, whatever is readily available to you. There. So, we are basically done with this piece. What we want to do now is just very gently flip it over. And I'm not, at this point, going to put the whole weight of it on there, on these feet, or it could collapse. It's actually holding up pretty well. And I just want to make sure that I like how the feet look, um, that I like how the inside looks. And by doing this too, you make sure that it sits on the surface in a way that you like. And we'll flip it back over. If you want, at this point, um, if you have these little uh, score marks that have kind of run over. You can see I kind of missed the mark on this one a little bit. Take a take a brush that is pretty dry. Um, you don't want to get your clay too wet. And just, you can very gently pull those marks out. You could come back in with your texture tool that you used to kind of get rid of any of those little imperfections that you might not like. If you want to add a hole to the bottom for drainage for your plants, you'll just take your toothpick or skewer or what have you and just slowly go around in a circle and it's kind of like cutting away a piece of wood. You don't want to do it all at once. Just slowly work your way until you get to the bottom, and I'm supporting this piece on the inside with my finger so that way I don't push through, um, push all the way through the clay. And then eventually you'll get to the point where you can pull this piece out, and that's a really huge drain hole. I would maybe not make one that big, but that's okay. 
you can see on the inside now we have that drain hole. You can clean that up a little bit with your finger. And clean this part up a little bit. Okay, well, I think that we are done with this. And I'm gonna leave this actually upside down to dry, just so we're not t putting too much pressure on these feet. I will cover this in plastic, uh, just dra drape it lightly over the pot. The reason that I'm gonna do that is because these attachments will marry better if the clay sl slowly dries. And just as a general rule, when you're working with clay, the slower you can dry it, the less cracking you're gonna have. Uh, so just a plastic shopping bag or anything that you have laying around the house will do for that. Well, thank you guys for joining me today. I hope to see some of you in a future class in our studio. So yeah, visit our website at theflips.org and I hope to see you soon. Have a great one.